Right, we are building an action plan for media for 2018 and this week we're talking about technology. Uh, we're going to look at seven areas of media mm -hmm. and provide really practical advice on what you should do now, next and in the future looking at these kind of seven areas. So this, this week we're starting with technology uh, because it's really interesting and it's new and it's a bit overwhelming. It is and it's probably the most confusing and frustrating area for brand marketers. Yep. Um, but undoubtedly, if you get technology right, it will drive competitive advantage in media. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we mean by technology? Well, the, the, the best uh, users of technology use technology to help inform the way that they make media decisions. Yeah. It also enables smarter, faster, more effective execution. Yeah. So better strategy and better execution if you use uh, technology properly. Yeah, indeed. Um, and we, we did some research in, in Media Tech last year. Uh, three quarters of the respondents, which was uh, a couple of hundred marketers from around the world, said that uh, that having a strategy for technology and data mm -hmm. would be a competitive advantage for, yeah. for marketers, so that's kind of important. And also WFA last year did some research on their members and two thirds said that they didn't have the internal expertise or capabilities to kind yeah. of effectively exploit that. So, you know, it's recognized as being an important and it's a gap. So here's an action plan for how to deal with that. Okay, let's start with now then. So what, are the, what would be the immediate actions? Okay, well it's about understanding where your current position is, both from a technology perspective and a data perspective. Yeah. From a tech perspective, um, what are you currently using? What value is it adding to your supply chain? Yeah. And how much is it costing? You've yeah. got to get visibility on that. From a data perspective, it's about understanding the data that you currently have and how you're using it to make informed media decisions. And importantly, what data gaps do you have? Yeah. And how that could improve your media uh, decision-making process. Yes, yeah, indeed. So, you know, it doesn't have to be super forensic, but just have some kind of framework that allows you to do a kind of simple diagnostic of, you know, where you stand, both in terms of tech and data. You know, from a multinational business, that could seem a bit overwhelming, cause, but, you know, in our experience, we've seen large businesses have got many, many different solutions that have all been kind of built up over the years, like scar tissue, and it just needs a bit unpicking, just yeah. to see, like, you know, what you've got, what's working and what's not working create that asset uh, and that's your line in the sand. Absolutely. Okay, let's think then next. So that's about the actions that you're gonna to need to take to kind of protect your position going forward. Yeah, and this is all about defining what a strategy for both tech and data is. It doesn't yeah. have to be complicated, but it's about having a point of view. And generally speaking, it's about taking control. Yeah. So understanding what tech providers you are looking to access in the future mm -hmm. to enable smarter media decision making. And also the data that you've got at the moment, make sure you've got control of it, but yeah. also what additional data sources do you need to combine with your existing data sources to make smarter decision making? Yeah, and that's taking, taking, taking more control of it, as you say, that is the strategy really for both for data and tech, uh, is, is take control. Uh, and that might require some you know, tweaking of existing contracts maybe with agencies or any other suppliers or, vend or vendors or publishers mm -hmm. to make sure that they, those important data sources that you've identified uh, are sustainable and uh, controllable by you as a marketer. Right, so for the future, so this is about a kind of a long-term commitment to improvement. Yeah, and it's about education. I mean, yeah. technology and, and the use of data isn't going to go away, yeah. right? This is going to be the heartbeat of most marketing organisations. Yeah. And, you know, the sooner that brand leaders can communicate this and share this kind of knowledge within, culturally within their organisation, systemically within their organisation, yeah. the more traction and the more powerful it will become. Yeah, indeed. It's not a niche thing. It's not, it doesn't sit with, you know, a digital department or an IT department or an e-commerce department. It's absolutely fundamental now to marketing success. And every single marketing stakeholder needs to be able to articulate, yeah. you know, the use of technology and the, and the importance of data. So, that, you know, you have to commit, get a mandate for education. And I think on the data, you know, as, as a marketer, as you take more control of the data, and particularly then when you start to apply analytics to that and really understand uh, the impact that individual media impressions or media will drive on the, as a business outcome, that's really interesting. Because then you start to understand the value of media to your business 
That's what data and technology is going to do. It will help you understand the value of media. And then when you understand the value of media, you can then set the price of media. Uh, and it then starts to make the marketer, once again, the smartest and most influential component of the whole supply chain, which is probably where it should be. And that's all about control, right? And then you've suddenly got control. Indeed. So uh, we've conveniently packaged all of that into this lovely me uh, action plan for media technology. So uh, you'll see below this video, every week we'll give you a link to uh, our site where you can just download this for free, uh, and it describes kind of some of the actions that we've, that we've gone through today. Uh, this is a year about media action. Please uh, go ahead and let us know how you get on. Good week four. Procter & Gamble, who are re-looking at the amount of agencies that they work with. Yeah. So they've already shrunk uh, their agency roster from 6,000 to yeah, 2,500. And now they're going to do it again. They're going sh to halve that 2,500 agency yeah. roster. Uh, and in the process, save significant money. But yeah. uh, it's not just about saving money. I get the impression that they've got a really clear blueprint for how they want to work with their agency suppliers. Mm -hmm. And they are clearly activating that. So they, yeah. that's a business that has got their house in order, I think. Yeah, and I should add to that, on the, they did this analyst call this week, which is where they kind of announced that, and their CFO mm. is so articulate about media, it's really worth listening to. So if you've got a spare kind of half an hour, dig out the analyst call if it's recorded, I don't know, <clears throat> but uh, it's really, really impressive. So bad week four. Bad week four. Well, it's a, it's a week, I think, that Sir Martin Sol's going to want to forget. It's been a pretty nasty week for WPP on a number of fronts. Um, so the share price continues to kind of drop a little bit. It's been down another about 10% or so this week. Um, and uh, somewhat maybe related to that is uh, the fact that four of their big, really big accounts, uh, some big global ones as well, have been put up for review. So that's uh, Sky across Europe, we know, obviously was already in play. Mars uh, globally have announced a review. HSBC, another big WPP uh, media account. Um, and also Shell, a very long-standing uh, client of theirs globally. Uh, so all of those in review. And then just to kind of add kind of further misery to that, you might have seen news about a charity dinner that has been running in London for, I think, about 30 years, which WPP have been a, a, a kind of prominent sponsor of. Um, an FT investigation, Financial Times investigation, revealed uh, some worrying cases of kind of sexual harassment yeah. and uh, you know very un PC behaviour going on. Not that WPP were guilty of that, but they they were one of the few companies, sadly, that were named explicitly in the FT investigation, mm -hmm. which was quite harsh. Yeah. Um, although they were, they had, WPP were the first company to distance themselves actually from from the organisation, but it's just a, you know a bit of a PR uh, mess uh, that they need to distance themselves from. And while Martin is in Davos. Uh, he's probably thinking he's glad to escape yeah. uh, for a few days. Right, question of the week. So when it comes to media technology, where do you think you are on that journey? Now, next, future. Excellent. Uh, so that is your media technology action plan for this week. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week. Recall, we decided that this year, well, nothing. Oh, I was sorry. looking, I, was I thought I made a mistake. No, I was, I was, I was, I was interested in what okay. you said. Yes.